we are doing the introduction to the week two challenge. What is expected for this week? What are the learning points or the objectives? So week two, if you've looked at the curriculum, is about dockerization, Kubernetes, and uh, all that. I'll let Peter talk more about it. He's more knowledgeable on the subject than I am. So Peter, welcome. Uh, hi guys, uh, Peter here again. I remember we met during the the Git the Git type. There, I hope you enjoyed my lessons. If you enjoyed, it's your turn to enjoy again. If you did not enjoy, it's a time to change your mind in this one. So uh, the terms, I think uh, maybe have you guys heard about containers? Uh -huh. Containers. There's any container that you have heard of. It doesn't matter whether it is a uh, it is it is it is the shipping container or the food container used to carry food with. Yes, so you guys have heard about containers. Uh, now, now to more difficult things that you guys heard of Docker. Docker. Okay, I am seeing a number of people. Have we heard of uh, something called uh, uh, software packaging? Packaging for software. Putting putting software in packages. But I've seen people doing serving and building. Uh -huh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, okay. Some so, some familiar things. Ah, okay. Then uh, now this is the final question. Uh, you don't know what, uh, don't worry, don't worry. I'm seeing people, if you have not, uh, if you have not heard of it, that's why we are here. You actually are better positioned. They're just a, a hack in life. Eh? It is easier to learn than to unlearn. You should be worried if you have if if someone lied to you what containers are, because it will take long for you to. But it's better if you never heard of it. I don't worry though. We should be able to get ourselves started. You know. Uh, have you guys heard of anyone who has heard of uh, anything about orchestration or Kubernetes? Anyone who has ever heard of that? Orchestration, Kubernetes, serverless. Interesting. So uh, we will uh, we'll be okay. Then my last question is, hey, have you guys heard of servers? Web servers? Uh, I can see someone has heard of serverless. I can see some people have heard of those terms. If you have heard any, any of those terms, it's okay. That's 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 good. Uh, have you guys heard of uh, Nancy? Don't worry, don't worry. Collins, no worries. That's why we are here. Uh, have you guys heard of the, the servers and the VMs? Servers, the servers. Uh, ever heard of a server somewhere where you go and uh, that is a place where it is uh, what you what you put there is can be visible on the internet you have heard of that eh? so the services that you have created those uh, web, web websites those web pages you can put them in a place where you can send uh, your, your village mates if you have village mates back home and then they can see what the work of, the work of your team eh? no, that's okay so before we begin, I would like to make some clarification. This is not like the session on Git. I'm not giving you information. I'm giving you direction. Does that make, make, make sense? I'm just meant here to give you direction so that uh, uh, you, can, you can look at what to read. So just like the other session, if you were here last week, uh, you, you remember that uh, we were able to uh please when you are able to see my screen please uh, uh confirm i'm seeing participants can i am waiting from the participants to to say where they can because uh, uh awesome ah good so if you remember the last time so i put this here it will be set to the correct place so please don't worry much about uh, the file being here I'm here to give you direction about what you are supposed to learn. So I would like to introduce you guys to containers. And this, my, my topics are always simple. How to learn containers. That's it. That's why we are here. We, we need to learn how to learn containers. So how do you go about containers? Remember this at uh, this time, in this, if you looked at what we have, we're supposed to look to, 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 to look at containers, you're supposed to look at orchestration, you're supposed to look at things called Kubernetes. You're supposed to look at places where you are not logging into servers to, to deploy systems. You are supposed to, to see all that. But, uh, but we start very simple. 
I want you guys to go and understand the unit of distribution. Now, this is a very simple thing. If you write your code, you see there's you is writing the code and there's a person who is using your code. For example, uh, you guys have written the website, those pages, maybe you have used HTML and CSS. And you want to send to someone so that they can calculate their, their, how much they are earning, and how much the government of Kenya is earning from them. So you do that and then, and then uh, uh, the, 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 the person, when they are doing that, that's your user. Is that okay? So now in this case, what you need to do, you need to go and understand the unit of distribution. How do you send your code, which you have created for, to the user? That's the basic thing. And for this, I want you to focus on compilation and interpreted languages. Compiled languages, you will find uh, languages where you write something like C, you convert it to something else. You write something like Java, you convert it to Java uh, compiled, the Java C. You write something like, like those are the compiled languages. Interpreted languages, you find you just run them as they are most commonly. But I want you to go and look at it deeply. So for me, I'm just going through so that we understand each other. Uh, something like Python, PHP, JavaScript, those are interpreted languages. Uh, so for compiled languages, you, you realize there is a step to the, up to the compiler, but all of them run as machine instructions at the very base. Uh, understand what will be running. That's, this is a very key thing. Understand uh, what is it that I'll be running. Yes, I'm creating this C project, but what will I run? Has anyone here ever installed uh, uh, dot C in their in the application? No, these these uh, currently I'm showing this on 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 the Chrome. This Chrome came to me as a as a dot deb package. It can come to you as a dot exe if you're on Windows. It can come to you as a apk if you're on Android and whatever iOS people have. Sorry, no 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 need. I, I next time I'll be more humble for the iOS people. So. That's a, that's that's that, that's basically how uh, what is it that will be running. So now after you create a question of building and recompiling so software, and you have seen some someone some people have represented something in in React. Eh? Now uh, just 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 for the for the for the record, uh, the website does not understand React. The browser does not understand React. That, that that's the, the the honest truth. So what it understands is HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. And some other things, the font files, those things. So it understands static files. But you, you want to, you, you want to, to create things in an interesting way using React, using Angular, using Vue.js, or Vue.js. And in this case, you need to recompile. You need to recompile your data. For example, you can have Angular, I put it there, React, TypeScript, some, if you guys have, have heard something called TypeScript, uh, just know this is a common, this is very common with frameworks. Spring Boot, some of the things in Spring Boot are not compliant in Java. Okay, I think most of the things Spring works to ensuring that, uh, and we'll, I think we'll get a chance to talk about such a thing. If you are doing in Java, the Spring framework ensures that most of the things are compliant. But still, you may find that something that you have introduced is not compliant. So what are you supposed to do? Supposed to convert it to Java. Angular will be converted to HTML and CSS. TypeScript will be converted to JavaScript. Laravel, some of the Laravel syntax will be converted to raw PHP. And for that, I've given you some resources so that you can take a look at. So at this point, you'll just be understanding how will I distribute my solution? And remember, software is not anything complicated. Software is what you have created. Even if it is two lines of code, even if it is it, that tracks code cal calculator, that's your software. How do you distribute it? That's the first thing that you need to understand. Remember, at this point, you have not, if you can look at it, we have not seen any, any, anything to do with the containers. Eh? So that's the first part. And I, I expect this to take you around uh, half a day or a day. I expect you to, to at least understand uh, a few concepts in this as we, uh, as we get started. Now, the second part, I, I want us to focus a little bit and I want us to focus on web applications. So these are applications, these are not just websites. Web applications are actually applications accessible on the internet. That's a simple definition. Look for the bigger definition. And I want you to, I want you to go and ask yourself, what is a server? This is a question that you may not get the answer to. 
because everything is a server. So you may find that a server is something that is serving. Okay, that 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 that. If if, if you ever see that in a class and you are, you get kicked out, don't don't mention my name. So a server is something. That, yeah, you you'll get actually you'll get negative wasting time for the lecture. So in this case, understand what is a server. A server is something that it's like uh, if we say Malin is, is is serving us, then we go there and Malin gives us something. If it's food, Malin gives us food. Some sweets, Malin gives us some sweets. If it's water, that's a server. So in this case, Malin should be accessible by us, and then you go there, you get given what you want. That's a server. Now understand the question of virtual machines. Uh, just to give you some insights. If the companies that give us the so-called servers online, like in the likes of AWS, Google, Cloud, if they were giving you an entire laptop by yourself, servers would never be, 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 be affordable. But what do they do? Have you heard of, anyone who has heard of VMware, VirtualBox, where you install OS within OS? Like you have Windows, you don't want to install, you want to install Linux, you put it in a virtual box, then you create a virtual machine, and in that machine you can run whatever. Most of the servers that we have run in this way. I was waiting for someone to say yes. I have not seen a yes. Ah, Henry, thank you. Yes. So that's how we that's how we do we do. That's that's how we are able to put the same same laptop, but we are sharing it 10 of us. Yeah. So virtualization is a concept that came a long time ago and you can take a good look at it. Now, I want you to go to understand something called, and there are this complex. Please take note of something called embedded servers. This will be complex. Basically, Moses went to the burning bush, or oh, Moses went to the mountain, sorry. Now, embedded servers is a case of the mountain coming to Moses, a small mountain coming to Moses. How your application needs a server. Instead of your application going and getting deployed in a server, a server comes into your application. I want you to go and try to understand what that means. Because this will be very important. When you are deploying backend services, you cannot share servers. Because if I share server with you and you are if I share a server with you, you see for websites, you can share servers very easily. Why? Because uh, basically, uh, if people will just be getting pages. But if you are serving, let's say you, you are serving traffic in, in, in Vika and I'm serving traffic in Nairobi and, uh, and someone else is serving traffic in Mombasa, can you, uh, can you share? What if there's a lot of traffic in Mombasa? You will starve me. So for that, most of the time, what? Well, uh, up for runtime, uh, these uh, these uh, these guys like Java. At times you don't you, you don't share server. So for that I want you to go and look at embedded servers. And I want you to go and focus on runtime dependencies. There is some dependencies that's when you are running. How do you run your application? You can find that like in Java you install OpenJDK to run. Now this the, okay this 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 is a mistake. Uh, and, and, and I've put some notes here. I wanted to go and if you go to Java, I wanted to at least understand the difference between JVM, JRE, and JDK. Now, in case that confuses you, please go and get yourself un unconfused. Yes, for website, we saw something like Apache, such a thing. So this is example, that, that's not an exhaustive list because you can use JRE for this. You can use another open JDK, you can use what I call JDK. These, these, these are just examples. I, I want you to understand the root folder for web pages. Okay. Oh, those J's, they are here. And this will be shared just right now. JDK here, JRE here, and JVM. Can you can you can you see? Can you see that? Steve, Steve W. Thank you. So they are here. Remember everything that that, that you need is, is here, and my number. Uh, my, my contacts will also be, be here so that you can, you can call to ask. Now, I want you to go and under, 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 understand configuration. So you have understood the question of root folders and all those. Uh, then 
So this is where, if you want to serve, put a website in Apache, you will put it in this directory. Understand why? Nginx, Nginx, Nginx. So this is uh, something. Oh, my screen is pretty tiny. Zach. Oh, you how, can how can I Yes. You can plus plus, Peter. Control plus. Oh, I, oh, I thought, is that okay? Your, the font is little, yes. Is that that's better? That is okay. I can that, keep going. Is that better? I think it is, yes. Zach, Zaki is happy. Ah, Zaki, Zaki is happy. If Zaki is happy, then we're okay. Ah, sorry, 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 guys. For, for but but this will be shared. So please, uh, in case of in case there's something that you want me to repeat, um, I'm an easy person. You can take me back, as long as it's at the beginning, not or not. We talked about it uh, the, the other the other week. Okay. So understand the question of root folders, and this knowledge is coming together to build as into what we call containers. Now understand the configurations. How do you configure? Apache, how do you configure my scale? So look at several things and look at how do I configure my application? And this is very simple. When you create your application, there are some moving parts. Based on how Marlin will run it, she will put some things. How Zach will run it, put some things. How Nancy will run it, put some things. For example, you will put a different password from Marlin's, or so I'm assuming. In that case, that's a configuration. You may choose you'll run it in a different environment, then, then that's, that can be a configuration. So I put some notes here for you to, to look at. These, some of them are the official documentation. Just note that for Nginx, we have the paid version and the free version, the open source version. I want you to focus on the nginx.org. Don't go to nginx.com because that's, that's, that's paid for. And uh, I, I'm not... Uh, I, do, I don't think you need to, at this point, you need to, to pay for Nginx that much. Apache is there. Some things which can, 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 can get you started, you'll be able to understand a few things. So now we have understood how to run our applications. We have understood uh, how to distribute our application. How do we put them together? Then how do we run them? Now, that once we have that answer, the next question is, for this, you just need to read about containers. Simple, understand the history of containers. Uh, just, just, just look at containers. And I want you to, just to explain containers to you. You see what we talked about, packaging your solution and how to run it and the configurations. That's basically containers. So containers is a unit of distribution. That's why I told you to understand the units of distribution. The units of distribution that will come across Include one of is one is code. At times you can just give your code for someone and they run it, like HTML. Just give someone, then the website will interpret it. The second one is a package, something, a compilation or a package or something. So I package my solution, then I give it to you, then you run it. The other one, which is now very common, is container. I put things in a container, I give you, you run it. Now the question is this: a container contains the configuration, the binaries, just everything that is required to run the application. Which is to say that if you have a container and have a container, you should run in the same same way. So I want you to go and look at what containers are. And then the, uh, the, the reason we are running containers, the reason we are able to run containers, let nobody lie to you, is because of Docker. Docker is a people, is a, is a, is a company that brought containers to the world. To, okay, not to the world, by the way. Containers came a long time ago with question of Google C groups, Google, there was a Linux C groups and all those things. The question of uh, taking your space in short, like you will see such, such, such things if you look going to the history, but that's not very important. So I wanted to, to go on into understanding Docker. That's very important. How did we get, get here? Some components of Docker, I want you to look at Docker commands and uh, the resources have been put. Then I want you to look at Docker Hub. You guys know about GitHub? Ah, okay, I've seen Tevin giving us answers. Thank you, Tevin, but we don't need answers, not at this point. 
but uh, someone can take a look at, at that and, and, and also get, get uh, to, to, to see a few things. So Docker Hub is like the GitHub for images. So, and what is, a, what is an image? I think you need to you learn that about containers here and images. So an image, as you have said, it contains everything required to run the application. And uh, you, you, you can push, you create the image, then send it to Docker Hub. Then someone can, you can give them rights to pull your image and then, then they do that. So pull container, pull, this should be pull image, don't worry. Run, uh, login Docker, you'll come across this. And these ones, you, you just need one resource, the docs, Docker documentation. It will guide you in this. But at least understand that you, you have seen this. So at this point, now you have seen how to deploy solutions. You have seen how to create uh, containers. Just, just to make it very simple for you. A container is a running image. An image is putting together everything required to run your application. And an image can be shared. You can share an image with someone else, then they run it. And now, now, now that we are here, uh, we know we will, we, we, we will uh, if you run your application by using Apache, then you, you need to create a, an image that does the same. Says, give me Apache, then run the application, put it in this root folder. That's why we talked about everything up there. Nothing is complex. If, if, if we spend this week, by the end of this week, you guys will be understanding containers inside out, and you'll be experts in this. That's, that's an assurance that I can give you. But please go through this. Then now, uh, I, know, I know this may not be your problem. So at times, the problems that we are, we are looking at may not be yours. Uh, but this, if there's anyone with a question, they can stop me. They can stop me. I tried to create something comprehensive that will guide us. Okay. Now containers orchestration. Container orchestration. Simple. Peter. So, yes. Maybe not a question, yeah. but I, I loved the part where you talked about the unit of the distribution, and you said, you know, as who wrote the TypeScript files, they have to be whether it, some people say build, other yes. people call it package. But whatever yes. comes out is something that you can give to someone, they go run it. Yes. And I know I wanted to mention maybe when you're creating libraries, sometimes we, we, we end up with package files or jar files for Java as a yes. thing that we give out. And I think you also compared it to another way of giving now my website. I might give you the CSS files and everything in a zip folder, but I could also give you as, as an image, a, a Docker container a Docker image that you can use to now start containers and run the application. Exactly. And I think Marlin mentioned earlier, I thought it was nice to bring this because when there was a guy who said that the code is not working on his laptop and Marlin made a joke and said, it was working on my laptop, but <laughs> not working on, on another environment. Uh, so I think also containers help us fix that maybe. And I don't know yeah. whether you are, yeah. So just a comment, but the overview is very on point from my point of view. Okay, anyone, anyone, anyone else? Uh, thank you, Kamuti, for that. Uh, so basically, we need to solve the issue where if if the unit of distribution is near to the use is near to the programmer than the user, we'll find those issues. It works on my side. It was like because why the why, the reason is very simple. If you bring it to my side. I use different dependencies. I can use different runtime. Runtime, like uh, if you're using JDK 7, I can run it in JDK 8. And then it, it decides it doesn't run in JDK 8. Mostly it works other way. You run it in JDK 11. Now I'm trying to put in, in, in JDK 8. It says, nah, 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 not here. So, but if you put it in a container, in, in an image, you specify that. Then when I'm running the container, very good. Yes. Okay. So now, 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 now we are there. Now, as I was taking, telling you guys about orchestration, orchestration is not your problem, not at this point. But it is Kamochu's problem. Why is it Kamochu's problem? Because Kamochu uh, uh, and uh, and and uh, so Kamochu at this point, he has done containers. True, he has done containers. The problem is this. 
Kamochu has, let me give you an example of a system called Tiara. But if anyone, you hear anyone who needs to send an SMS to anyone, Kamochu is, is the guy. He will give, he'll deliver SMSs personally. So Tiara is a solution by Meliora that sends SMS. It does more, but I just want to focus on that sending of SMS. If you want to do bulk SMS, if you want to do some, some uh, campaigns, that it will, it will do that. So now let us take Tiara. Tiara, Kamuchi, how many partners are running Tiara at the moment? Mm -hmm. Give Wait. me a number. Over 10, over 20, over 50? Yes, over, over maybe around 20. 20 partners. Kamuchi has 20 partners. And how many modules are within, within Tiara? Oh, do I remember? But, but I think about Around, let's say five. less than 10. Yes. Okay. Six, six, five, five to 10 now. Let's put 10. So Kamochu has 20 environments running 10 modules, and that's one, one service. Now, each module is the idea of a microservice. Each module should run in its own container. So, how many containers that, that does Kamochu have for Tiara alone? 200 containers. So do you want Kamochu to, how can Kamochu confirm that 200 containers are up? Okay, okay. leave alone containers. You guys, have you, have, have you guys had it, uh, added goats? I think uh, let us leave containers alone. Like how can you, like looking at 200 things, one of them running around, one, another one stopping, another one crashing, another one doing what? Is a, is a mess. It's not possible. So Kamochu needs help. And that's where you find that. The help is someone who can ensure that they manage each container. That's orchestration. And that's where you find something like Kubernetes, OpenShift. Yes. yes. Jackson, you have, you have something? OK. So that's basically orchestration. And I want you to, to just make it in, make it, put it in a very simple way. Let's, let's assume that you have a daycare. And your daycare is in is, is somewhere where there's a lot of people. And then different people bring the different children. And each child is supposed to be fed. They are supposed to, to have a nap. They're supposed to have everything. And they are bringing 200 children or just 50 children. Now, orchestration is telling you that I'll give, you, I'll give you someone to manage each child individually. Instead of having one person running around looking, looking left, right, and center, orchestration is a service that manages each container. So it manages the container. In case it goes down, it can restart it. In case you want to have someone has a lot of traffic, you want them to scale, and I want you to look at scaling. What is scaling? Basically, this, uh, I want you to put that here. I'll put it horizontal versus vertical scale. The scale, scale, scale for I put it, don't worry. Yes, but that's basically orchestration. It's me taking or the management. Then, then I know there's a lot, there's OpenShift, there's um, Apache Mesos. You look at the different solutions that do uh, orchestration. But I want you to focus on Kubernetes. Kubernetes, I'm not Kubernetes. I'm not an expert in naming. But this is the guy that, that you need. Uh, so, for this one, I want you to look at uh, I want you to just be practical. Install micro eights on your laptops, run some basic commands, deploy your service there. You, it, you already made it a container, you push it to, 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 to Docker Hub, so now you have it. Now I want you to, to run the service. Then I want you to go to somewhere like Lab, play with K8s, or uh, now this is working under duress. Something called Catacoda or something, just okay, something and 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 uh, here you can be given a, a place where you can deploy your services. You can scale them up, scale them down. It will give you a place where you can create a free class. I think it, it is for around one hour. Natujenge is an official cluster for Natujenge, which will be created. And then we will be able to deploy our services here. Now, someone said they need serverless. If you don't serverless, means less servers, like no server, then uh, you, you might have been confused by the world. Serverless means that you not, don't need to access the server. You remember we said orchestrator manages the containers. So serverless 
is you you just telling something orchestrator in this case like kubernetes how to run your commands how to run your services so that you don't need to log there and start them in and stop stop them and all those things you don't need to go to the server so now it it mean it may be confusing why did i tell you guys to get into the server and now i am telling you that you no longer need servers welcome to the world that's how it is people and but and unless you understand why something came even if you are here and you you're saying i don't need to understand c because i'm coding in the era of kotlin and typescript uh please that's a big mistake i want you guys to check take your time understand what servers are log into the servers and then we get to the point where you don't need servers why because the needs your needs need to be to remain the same otherwise you just conform to what is there which is why the people who do best with Kubernetes are people who, you, who deployed before Kubernetes. I don't know if that makes sense. You can quote it somewhere. The people who do well with the Git are the people like the likes of people who, who, who pushed, who took code in, in flash disks. Why? Because they understand their problem. So I want you to start using the server so that you can come here and then you can decommission the server and now be working on Kubernetes. Now, I want you to go there, look at Kubernetes, just look at the entire docs, not just this part. And that will be there. After doing that, you'll, you'll have uh, understood everything that there is to understand. I will not, I will not so allow me to uh, go back a little bit. Uh, for this process, I don't recommend, I, I, I really don't uh, want to, to constrain you to just learn it uh, in a linear way. You can leave is but at least before you move to the next session ensure that you understand enough in the first session so like before you move to section two so that you know some some good information about section one is that okay so i want to uh, see if you have you guys have any questions you can ask them then uh, if it once we are done i i'll uh, i'll still send you this link but the, the desire, Malin, you'd share this link, but the desire is we put together the all the lessons that we are we, we, we are putting. For me, I that's how that's how I do my, my sessions. I put them in markdown and 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 I share with, with you guys so that you can always refer and you don't need to take notes when I when I'm when I'm maybe go skimming through. Yes. So I don't know if, if there's another question about what the, this expectation. Malin, you will share with this, this with them. Sure, yes. Okay, now then I, at least you can check breathe in and check questions. Uh, maybe uh, you guys can go through this and then in the course of the week, if you guys need uh, Peter to come and maybe give a, a demo, then he, we can arrange that. Peter, I think it would be advisable that everybody tries this on a repository in their own profile. And then they will present their their group yeah. prepared on Tuesday. Yeah. No, I I I I I don't want to be an expert in this. Uh, I don't know how you guys want uh, want want to proceed, but uh, but everything that is here is applicable to everyone who is around. So yes. I would suggest that you work on it in a in a repository. Yes, like once it is running, it's okay then uh we should we, sh we should be fine so just work on it by yourself uh we will uh, then we, we will meet because some of these things are commands and I, I don't know how you can run commands in a group has anyone figured that with you oh, you, you can run docker run then on your side and i do docker build on my side no, no please do these things on on your own but in the group you can help each other and then as a larger group we'll be uh, making your lives better <laughs>